Hello everybody, this is Jehoadek Maccabeus, Maccabeus Everyday Survival, and I got a few things I want to show to you today for my summer kitchen. I've started it, uh, getting things arranged, getting everything drug out that I've saved to build one, and uh, I've built several for other people out of stuff like this, and uh, I think it's time I get my own done like I want it. But uh, I'm going to turn this camera around and we'll get with it. Most of you are familiar with this one here. I've done several videos a couple years ago uh, cooking several meals on it. I got different plates for the top. Uh, that's just one of the extras. I generally use the single one for like fr just frying up one skillet worth of stuff or uh, deep frying or using my camp oven. Uh, but there's videos back on my channel that uh, show all that stuff. This is a truck rim that I picked up. I mentioned it back a few videos back when I was showing off that. This is for outdoor canning. For the trick for outdoor canning is to run two fires. So I'll need a funnel to pour coals in. Instead of trying to maintain one fire and, and keeping the uh, a, uh, equal temperature in there to regulate it, uh, you need another fire, like say what's underneath that kettle. Um, which I'll have a different spot set up for it and uh, use something like this here, which I'll get back to that here in a minute. Uh, bring coals over and dump in around through the different holes. I'm going to cut some covers probably and put on some of them. It depends on how I haven't tried it, so I don't know what all I'm going to have to do to regulate the temperatures. I did leave the rocks. Uh, they're, they're not concreted, so it can have some air draft underneath there. Instead of being too tight. This. I've had this for years. And I started putting it on another one that I was building. And I decided not to. But it's a pivoting swing arm. See it's got the hole there on the end for a. Oh that's probably. Inch and an eighth shaft. And it's got another hinge spot there. The wheel spins. For a. Uh, like having it over your fire and you can swing it back and forth take stuff off your fire or off your griddle which i got a griddle over here i'll show it here in a minute this is another piece off of an old wood stove it's got a spring loaded door i gotta do some work on the hinges on it and uh i'm gonna take some sheet metal and close in around that area and build a rock outside on it so I can have a fire underneath of it or dump coals in, whatever I need to do. And between the rock and the metal, we'll let the heat rise. Closed off, put me a little chimney on the back. That'll be a uh, oven. Here's another one that I picked up years ago. This is actually a King water heater. Oakland FDY Company. Belleville, Illinois, but that center piece, uh, that cast iron piece in the, in the middle is actually a water bladder. You can cook on the top of this. You can cook on the top of any wood stove that's got a flat surface and direct contact. There's the hookups in the back. Got to do some uh, welding on a couple spots on it, fix that broken spot. There's the griddle. In case I got a, several people here and want to cook up a bunch of pancakes or a big breakfast or whatever. What's going to go over this one here? I got a, this deal set up out back. It's uh, two heavy uh, square steel rods. They go up, I don't know, four, four or five foot tall. 
and it's got one that goes across across and i got several rings on it where you can hang stuff over it over a fire or you can rotisserie a goat or a deer um, but i'm gonna set it up right here this isn't going to be anything this was in a video a bunch of scrap i pulled it brought in uh, shit hit the fan trading post i think that's an old cart i built out of a horse-drawn corn planter i built it to haul my propane and oxygen tanks around for my torch 100 pound uh propane in a big oxygen bottle one of my tables i got a few of them small wooden spools i got plans for some of them too oh better show off the old boy up here what do you think buddy hmm And I know it's not done yet, but I'm going ahead and showing it off now. Kind of give some people some ideas if uh, they want to start rounding up stuff in case there's ever a total collapse or a grid down or uh, they just want to build a summer kitchen for themselves right now just while things are good. Um, I just wanted to show them off now to kind of give you some ideas. I'll, I'll get this done probably sometime this year and I'll do a complete video of it. I've got a gazebo also. Um, got a build out here in this area. It won't be necessarily be a gazebo, but something of that style. Haven't decided completely how I'm going to do that yet. Still haven't got my teeth. I went down last week and got my, uh, they had the mold in for me to try in. It looked good and it felt good. Stayed sucked up to my gums real good without any, uh, poly grip or anything. But, uh. It'll probably be another week and a half or so. I don't know if I'm going to get them the next time I go or if it's another try this and adjust them. But I'll be happy to get them back. And that's all I got, I think. There was something else I wanted to talk about. All the shortages. Um, I wouldn't get too worked up about everything. Just stay ahead of the curve. You know, you ain't got to freak out. A lot of people are turning it into a freak out. Um. It's mostly a supply and demand thing. If you want to know if there's food shortages, watch the wheat production. Watch that. And it has been low over the last three or four years. I think that it's myself personally, that's why uh, one of the many reasons what's going on in Europe right now is going on. That word that they don't want you to say uh, between them two countries. Um, as far as the chicken culling, you know, we've had bird flu go through here before. It started back in the early 2000s um, coming through. They've coal herds, the hog industry, corporate hog farming, they coal thousands. I have seen trailer loads of pigs killed um, from PERS. Uh, I think it's PERS or PVD, one of the two. It's a 100% death rate. One piglet tests positive for it, they kill the whole litter in the sow. Uh, th this kind of thing goes on all the time in the food supply. And I don't know what the numbers are as of today, but about a week ago, um, the, the chicken population of the United States was estimated at 518 million, and they had only killed like 20 million. So, uh, I don't know. Even if it was 200 million, you know, that's, that's we still got over half of our chickens left. I I don't know. I I, I don't know. I'm just not too worked up about it. If you're worried about it, go get you some chickens. But don't get worked up about it the way people are trying to get you to react, you know. I don't know if that made any sense or not, but I'm going to leave it in there. Thank you all. You have a good day. Uh, you have a happy Passover or happy Easter, whichever way you swing on it. Um, I think most everybody keeps some kind of a uh, festive day to this weekend so you stay safe keep your head on a swivel god bless talk to you later